This is one half of the new podcast, Mob Chats, Bullet Bob Carson, fresh off my appearance at Pancrase. And I am at one of my many estates here on the Jersey Shore Valley, that $22 million. The furniture behind me, you see, is about $100,000. I just want to point that out here. We are honored to be joined by a man who needs no introduction, the dubbed the Hollywood Fixer, Mr. Ori Spado. Ori, it is an honor to have you on the program, my friend. How are you? Thank you, Bob. How are you doing this morning? I am doing great. I'm doing even better now. Um, we have a situation. We need a favor from you, okay? Uh, many celebrities turn to you uh, in, in Hollywood to, to conduct favors for them, uh, and we need a favor for you. Let me just explain the background here, the backstory here, okay? Uh, we did a press conference with John A. Lee in Atlantic City about a month and a half ago, two months ago. John A. Lee wants to fight John Jr. in boxing. Both John A. Lee and John Jr. have a boxing background, okay? They both have history. I, I know that you're uh, aware of, of their history uh, and whatnot. And John Gotti Jr. has a son, John Gotti III, who's the grandson of the late John Sr. John Gotti III is a prospect. He's an MMA fighter. He's a good-looking kid out of New York, okay, 29, 30 years old, has a great story, lost a lot of weight. And five, six, and one as an MMA fighter. He's got lightning hands. You could tell he's got boxing. Uh, he's got good wrestling and whatnot. And years ago, about five, six years ago, he called out Phil Baroni. Phil Baroni, of course, his father was a gold star detective, also worked for uh, the Gambino family, uh, worked with uh, John A. Light in a number of uh, robberies, a number of other uh, uh, activities, was allegedly the getaway driver uh, in a murder. Now he's in Las Vegas. And his son, Phil Jr., uh, is a former MMA fighter, pride fighter, UFC uh, legend, real badass who, who grew up down the street from John A. Light. Uh, Baroni used to go on a lot of runs with John A. Light. He was a tough kid uh, and whatnot, uh, you know, did a lot, a lot for John A. Light. And uh, John Gotti III called him out. And now we're trying to get a fight between John Gotti III and preferably Phil Baroni or John Jr. and John A. Light. The Gaudis have responded. The Gaudis are aware of this. They've released statements. Uh, they understand what's going on. And we turn to you here at Mob Chats. We thought, who better than to try to get this happen? The fixer who makes things happen, Mr. Ori Spadio. Ori, what can you do possible? What is your take on all this? Well, first of all, I stay out of other people's businesses. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, who, where are you going to do the fight? Who's going to buy tickets to it? Yeah, th those are those are all fair all fair questions. We have a number of different promotions that uh, would who's, be willing. Who's going to be the promoter, and who's going to want to see it? A lot of people are. Uh, we we could go on Triller, which which uh, is a really really good pay per view brand. Uh, we we can go on Fight Stream. There's so many different options. That's really not really not the issue. I mean, I I think, but your your point is well taken. It'll be here on the East Coast because of uh, of the history. And whatnot, and because the, the, the Gotti family has a, a staple here on the East Coast. John Gotti Jr. has an office here on the state uh, on, on the uh, East Coast. And also John Gotti the third trains on the East Coast in Long Island. And yeah, uh, he yeah. also fights I'm for aware. Uh, I'm aware of, uh, of all that there. Uh, but what is it that you want me to do? What would you do? How would you you fix this? How, what, what advice would you give to try to make, make this happen? You know, you, using your, your, your knowledge and, and your... Well, your first story. of all, you got to sit down with John Gotti Jr. and Johnny A. Light and make sure that they both want to do it. And is there anything that one, we If could, one does not want to do it, then you got no fight. Yeah. And quite honestly, John Gotti Jr. is how old? John, he's got to be in his 50s. He's in his 50s. Yeah. Johnny A. Light is how old? A lights 58, 59. They're around the same age. Right. Okay. Why would somebody, two gentlemen in the close to the age of 60s, all right, want to take a chance of getting in the ring? What's the benefit to them? Put aside differences, settle it without guns, without knives, with all, you know, how they used to settle it back in the day, make some money. And provide a show that, that people would buy. I mean, I have no doubt that people would buy this. People would be really, really interested in this. You know, the 
Maybe you get a thousand people. How many people are you thinking to go and buy tickets? That's a good question. That, that I would suspect a lot of people, but more people would watch you're, it. On you're Fox. expecting a lot of people. Yeah. But have you ever done a fight before? I do. You know about fight promotions? How to promote a fight? It's I, just not a, an idea. Yeah. You know, it's just not an idea of getting two people. Look, if you had Holyfield and uh, um, a cow, whatever his name is, okay? It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a team of people, all right, to be able to put that where the event's going to be held at. It's going to cost money, okay? It's going to cost money to promote it. The, and then at the end of the day, if you approach me and buy a pay-per-view, even if it was only $20, I would not buy it because that's not a fight that I'm interested in, okay? I'd rather see two young boxers on a full boxing card like boxing promotion normally done. I mean, when they did jumble in the, 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 the rumble in the jungle, Don King reached out to John Daly, who was a personal friend of mine. He was a very famous film producer and director. All right, it was John Daly who worked with Don King to promote that jungle, rumble in the jungle. So, I mean, you know, John, Don King was a great promoter. If you went to Don King and asked him would he promote this fight, he probably laugh at you. No, no, it, we, and, and he wouldn't be, be the promoter. This is, a, this is a novelty matchup. This is a freak show matchup. Okay, yeah. but there's a market for that, Ori. There's a huge market for. Look at Jake Paul. Look, look at some of these other other fights. They they produce more pay per view buys than freaking boxing than UFC. There's a huge market for that. I, th I think that the the mob genre attracts a lot a lot of people. Look at Johnny. Yeah, like, without with one of them saying no, you got no fight. Okay. So you got to have a contract. What's it going to be? What are they going to gain from it? Besides the fact that they might be able to put their uh, differences aside, okay? And how is that going to put their differences aside, okay? What is them fighting? One wins, how does that put the difference aside of what happened in the past? It has nothing to do with the past. So how do you create something around that? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I would say that... Uh... I don't know if I agree with that because these two guys, they have a history. They have strong feelings towards each other. They really do. And when people fight, they tend to respect each other after a physical confrontation like that, after a physical in, in, in endeavor. You know what I mean? Sometimes they say fighting doesn't solve things. I think fighting does solve things. But I, I understand what you're saying. Your, your, point, your point is well taken. Listen, I, from what I gather, you don't think this is a good idea. You, you, you don't think it, it, it would work. Um, and, and, and this is not something that you, you, uh, you know, you, you would ever, ever really get involved with. You're more of a, of a serious boxing fan. And I, I, I understand that, but, but before we wrap it up, tell us, you know, what you've got going on. If you have anything going on, I know you have books, um, you having any appearances or anything else that you want to let the, everybody know. Uh, well, I, am uh, going to be doing a lot of speaking engages. I'll be speaking at the NADA show in Las Vegas in March. I have a lot of things going on. There will be a major announcement very soon on something. It's a major thing. Uh, I cannot disclose it at this time. Uh, you know, and if you notice from my interviews, which I've done over a hundred, okay, I don't get involved in the John Gay lights, the Sammy Gravano. I know all these guys, okay. But I don't get involved in their battles and their lives because it, I got nothing to gain from it, number one. And number two, it's not my business. So if something ain't for, you know, my business, I stay right out of it. Unless I'm retained for something, 
And I don't take a retainer unless it's something that I feel with confidence that I can accomplish. I will not take a retainer. Don't, don't think that I just go out and fix people's problems because I'm Santa Claus, okay? I get paid for it. I get paid handsomely for it. And I'm I still understand. That. You, you follow me? Yes. Where, where can people find out what you got going on? You on social media, anything else? My social media, my website, theaccidentalgangster.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. My book's available all over. Barnes & Noble, Charters in, up in Canada. And uh, with things opening up, it will be available in many more bookstores and so forth. Uh, the book's a two-time bestseller. And I'm going to be working on my second book, which is going to be a motivational book. Okay. It's not That's going to be a case. We, we, we appreciate your time, Ward. Thank you so much for joining us all the way. Okay, Bob. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, boss. All right, bye.